Hello, Dan Schutte here at Shore View Natives in Two Harbors, Minnesota. I wanted to jump right into this video tutorial series with a quick, uh, just a quick chat about seeds. A couple of the first things I'll mention, uh, I've worked in natural resource management. Most of you have probably heard about invasive species. And I guess one of my biggest things with uh, kind of caring for the land is making sure we don't introduce things that we don't want out there. So uh, the first thing I'll say about growing plants from seed, make sure you know what you're growing. Make sure you know the plant that you're getting the seed from and that it is something that we want more of in our area or wherever you're at. Um, the other thing I'll say is make sure you have permission uh, wherever you're collecting seeds. Just make sure the landowner knows that you're there and you're going to grab a few seeds. It's phenomenal how many seeds that a flower head can have. Um, and I guess I wanted to start there with this discussion. There's kind of three big groups of flower heads and kind of the presentation of seeds uh, that I think about when I'm collecting. Uh, the first one I'd call is kind of a solid seed head. I've got a couple pretty well-known plants here, purple cone flower and a black-eyed Susan. So the flower was here and now the seed is in there somewhere. Most of the time with these sorts of seed heads, if you just break, a, break it apart with your finger, a bunch of stuff will fall down and the seed is actually pretty evident. Um, a magnifying glass helps with that sometime. This is the process of separating the wheat from the chaff, basically. There's a lot of other uh, old flower parts up there and you just want the seed. So what I do is just get something white and I kind of bang these on it. And as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff there, but as I look close, again, the seed is about what you'd imagine a seed looks like. Um, there's good pictures of seeds online a lot of times too, so you can kind of check uh, what you're looking at with another picture. But here in these one flower head, uh, there's probably, you know, a hundred seeds in that purple cone flower and maybe a couple hundred in this one flower black-eyed Susan. So I say that because you don't need to spend a lot of time and energy to get a lot of seeds in hand to grow. So that's kind of that solid seed head. Um, another thing that a lot of folks are going to be familiar with is this fluffy seed head there. So you know, kind of think of the fluff as a parachute and the seed is going to be uh, the person that's parachuting down below it. So as I pull that fluff off, if I look close, it's got uh, little dark spots on the bottom of them. Sure enough, that's a seed from that plant. This one's a big leaf aster. This was just sticking out of the snow uh, right here in the woods behind our place. So that's one that's here. I brought back another New England aster, same sort of seed structure, parachute with a little seed uh, hanging off of it. And then this is a goldenrod, which there's 14 species of goldenrod in Minnesota, and they're kind of found all over North America, actually. So this is another one It seems to hold its seeds into late winter, that if you're familiar with these plants or you knew where one of these plants was and you know it's a native plant, I'd go check it out right now, see if you recognize any of this fluff. And if you want to give a, give a try at growing a native plant from seed um, this year, just start small and start simple. Just grab a few of these. There's one more kind of structure. It's, I think of them as a cup. If you look closely at these old flower heads, this is a monarda or a bee balm, and it's got, you know, a hundred little tiny cups in it. And the seed is actually at the bottom of those cups. So if you're looking at a flower head that has a bunch of little cups on it, just bang it out. Oh man. And there's probably 150 seeds just uh, fell out of that little one there. The slender leaf mountain mint, another native mint here in Minnesota, same thing, smaller, but a lot of little cups. And if I just bang those out, that's a tiny seed, but I've probably got, I don't know, close to three or 400 seeds right there. So just a quick discussion, feel free to ask questions or you know, be in touch if you're looking at something, you're not quite sure what it is, I'd love to help. And this stuff is not specific to Minnesota. I mean, all over the Northern hemisphere, you're gonna see flowers, a lot of times these same species, depending on your latitude and they're gonna have that same structure on the flower head. Uh, so I guess as an educator, my suggestion, if you're just getting into this stuff, um, just take a walk outside, you know, remember some of this stuff. And uh, there's a few books that you can get that really make it a lot easier to, uh, you know, especially during the flowering period, identify these plants. But just doing a little observation of seed heads might be a great place to start. And then uh, you can spend this summer looking for some flowers that you wanna grow and you'll know right where they're at and you'll have a good handle on uh, what the seed looks like. And then next fall and winter, it'll be really easy to uh, collect those and then grow them. So like I said, be in touch if you have questions, comments. If you know something that I didn't mention here, it'd be good to share. Uh, I'm all about helping people know more about this, myself included. So thanks for the help. Have a great one.